Because my childhood, should I say, was quite good. I just remember my mum being very happy, always taking me out, um, taking me on her job, baking cakes with her, so it was quite fun. I knew that my mum loved me. At the young age of six years old, Susan's mother became very ill, and Susan took on the role as her caretaker. As her illness worsened, Susan's mom had to be transported to a hospital. So the next time I'd actually seen her was when she was laying in the hospital bed. And at that time, she was unable to speak. And I gave her a picture of myself. <laughs> and, you know, she started crying and holding on to that picture. And I think for me, that was my last memory of her. Susan's mother died and her body was taken back to her native country of Uganda. No one ever explained to Susan that her mother died. She was left to figure it out all on her own. Susan was then sent to live with distant relatives who were not welcoming at all. They treated me different and, you know, she would throw stuff at me and just be extra harsh with me. And so I think from that, you know, living in, in, in that family, I didn't really feel like I belonged because the only time I felt, you know, a sense of belonging was with, you know, my mum. So then after that, um, my cousin, who I call my dad, um, he moved me back to London and I stayed with him. Her cousin did the best he could for Susan, but she was still mistreated by everyone else. Throughout the years, Susan continued to have feelings of rejection and her sense of value and self-awareness were completely distorted. My feelings of suicide and depression started from when I was around nine, 10 years old. Because I felt like I didn't belong, I, f I always had this, this feeling of maybe it would be better if I was dead, maybe it would be, be better if I just disappeared. And then my cousin had kicked me out of the house. Carrying all the hurt, pain, and rejection with her, at age 14, she was then sent to live with her aunt, where she encountered a great deal of physical and mental abuse which caused Susan's depression to go to an ultimate high. That's when I, I kind of felt like, OK, why is this happening to me? I was brought up in church, um, so I was really, I was aware that there was a God. But um, even within that, I, was, I just thought to myself, if there is a God, then, you know, why would he allow me to go through so much? Why would he allow me to lose my mom? I'd found a Rick Warren book called Purpose Driven Life, randomly in the house. And so I opened it up and it, it answered the questions that I had, you know, that I had within myself. You know, it really affirmed that, you know, I was here for a reason, um, for a purpose like God had thought me through and I wasn't by, it wasn't by accident that I was born. Feeling more hopeful, Susan went to live with her cousin again and within three months of her time there, she was kicked out once again and became homeless. I felt depressed and, you know, I went, like, I think, two days without eating and I was just crying. I was just laying there in my bed and something just told me, you know, go to church. And now I know that was God. And so I was walking out of the church and I saw one of the the girls that I went to college with. And, you know, she asked me, you know, how are you? And I, the words that I said was, I don't want to live anymore. And, you know, it was at that point, like I kind of dropped, fell into her arms and she held me. And it was in that moment that I just felt like it wasn't necessarily her holding me or catching me in that moment, but it was God, you know, surrounding me and holding me and just letting me know that, you know, he, like he's there, like he's got me. And I think in the, I felt like it was just an encounter with God. And so in that moment, um, from I made a choice within myself that I don't want to be separated from what I'm experiencing right now, which was the love of God, which was his and everything that embodies it, which is peace and, you know, um, a sense of calm and joy, you know, and, and truth as well. Today, Susan is married to the man of her dreams and continues to minister and inspire women all around the world through her coffee and prayer ministry and her many devotionals and books. 
It's my mission to kind of share my story and to inspire and to empower women um, not to give up on God. Though the process is long, you know, you can actually make it, make it through. He is the source that you need to continue and to endure. And it will all serve a purpose at the end. You know, as scripture says, like, nothing compares to the glory that will be revealed in the end.